This is Trend Following Radio, where great thinking comes alive. Nobel Prize winners, legendary traders, best-selling authors, and the pros that know what drive us irrational human beings. I am your host, Michael Covell. Not filtered, raw, honest. That's my passion. Let me open with some voices, some names that you will recognize. And they're all speaking about a certain topic area that has my interest today. First, every child is an artist. The problem is staying an artist when you grow up. Pablo Picasso. If you hear a voice within you say, you cannot paint, then by all means paint, and that voice will be silenced. Vincent van Gogh. Have no fear of perfection. You'll never reach it. Salvador Dali. Curiosity about life in all of its aspects, I think, is still the secret of great creative people. Leo Burnett. You can't wait for inspiration. You have to go after it with a club. Jack London. Imagination is the beginning of creation. You imagine what you desire. You will what you imagine. And at last, you create what you will. George Bernard Shaw. Think left and think right. And think low and think high. Oh, the things you can think up if you only try. Of course, Dr. Seuss. Creativity is more than just being different. Anybody can plan weird. That's easy. What's hard is to be as simple as Bach. Making the simple awesomely simple. That's creativity. Originality is nothing but judicious imitation. Voltaire. Don't think. Thinking is the enemy of creativity. It's self-conscious, and anything self-conscious is lousy. You can't try to do things. You simply must do things. Ray Bradbury. And finally, from Steve Jobs, creativity is just connecting things. When you ask creative people how they did something, they feel a little guilty because they didn't really do it. They just saw something. It seemed obvious to them after a while. Of course, you're already guessing where I wanted to go today, which is the word, creativity. It's what we all want, even if we can't admit it. Now, here's the sad thing. When are we most creative? When we're kids? Now, I feel very fortunate. I've had this odd life that has allowed me to be involved in books, trading, filmmaking, now a podcast. Clearly, creativity is my heroin. I have to have it. I have to do it every day. It's my outlet. It's my soul. It's what I do. But I only learned that. I did not have the good fortune early in life for someone to tell me, for someone to show me, for someone to share with me their insights. That's why now I enjoy passing along what I've learned, what I have figured out. And this creativity thing, this is huge. You don't want a fucking job. Oh, don't get me wrong. You might have to take the job to pay the bills. I'm not criticizing you for that. But you don't really want the fucking job. You want the creativity. You want to do something that's cool, that you're known for doing it and only you, and you get credit for it. And then if you're damn lucky, someone compensates you for it. Now you can find creativity inside a job under some special circumstances. For example, if you get to be Jonathan Ivey at Apple, and there's other ones, don't get me wrong. But creativity is all about 
starting the business that did not exist. It's about writing the code that no one else has written. Creating that piece of art, the painting, writing the book, the trading system. These are all creativity. This is all creation. And you feel so damn good about it. I sometimes wonder, does this creativity thing, as long as one does not have insane vices in their life, too much booze, too much smoking, too much whatever, as long as you don't have too many vices, is creativity the secret, one of the secrets, to slowing down that cellular aging? Is it the secret to perhaps managing stress? Because if you wake up every damn day and you go to sleep every damn day wanting to create, wanting to do something novel that you can share with others, that's the highest place to be. It feels good. You smile. You're happy. You're like, damn, this is awesome. But we don't grow up with this. Think about the typical tract that a kid takes through high school. He's listening to teachers that really don't know shit about creativity. He's taking courses that, yes, foundationally can be useful, but there's no chance for creativity. It's multiple choice questions. It's the same answers. It's all about memorization. Think back to high school and how impressed you were with the kid that could play guitar the kid that could sing because we all thought we all imagined what if they break out they're part of the next super band when we're kids we all say to ourselves, oh my gosh we want to be in the band whatever that band might be we want to be the man the professional athlete creative think about a pitcher for you baseball fans Greg Maddox Pedro Martinez, not very big men, small in stature, but creative. They were artists pitching to the plate, making the best hitters in the world miss. That's creativity as well. Schools kill all this. Schools absolutely kill creativity. Because it's all just about getting a damn job. The entire psyche globally is about how can you get a job to then make money to then buy shit. Then one day you wake up and you say, what the hell did I do for 10 years or 20 years or 30 years or a lifetime and you're dead? You see, our friend Mr. School trains us to be one thing. It trains us to be a slave. Absolutely 100% trains us to be a slave. School cannot help you in any way, shape, or form to be more creative, unless it's a really special school. School is about measurements. What are your grades? What is your IQ? Now, I actually know people that go through their life It's quite humorous, really. They're sad, pathetic creatures discussing whether or not they are in Mensa or what their GPA was in college when they're in their fucking 40s or 30s or 50s or whatever. Can you imagine being that person? I hope the hell you're not one of them. Could you imagine being 30 years old, 40 years old? and discussing your grade point average from college. The definition of slavery. You are absolutely toast. You can't escape that. I look at my situation. I did not plan to be a creative person. I put a website up in the mid-1990s. Some of that success spurred me to the next creation. But none of my creation was the result of some natural talent. Everything I create is the effort. 
is the continuous effort, the elbow grease, the every day slogging along, banging bricks together. And then all of a sudden, one day after all that banging, you see something positive and you're like, damn, where did that come from? And then you realize only that continuous effort got you there. And it never stops. Look at something like writing. Do you really think that your writing ability is ever at a peak? Of course not. It's always improving. It's always getting better. That is, if you write. If you don't write, my gosh, why do you not write? You must write. I mean, we all write in some way or another with a phone these days. That's part of the game. So why not get good at it? Why not practice at it? Back to my point about school. How does school help any of this? How does school help the creativity? You know the answer. I'm not going to beat you over the head with it too much. What's one of the biggest reasons that creativity is blocked by the system, the state, friends, family, especially in school? Why do we not want that kid to be creative? Why do we not want that kid to take a chance? Why do we not want that kid to be great? Because the nature of the public school system is socialistic. And I don't necessarily mean politically socialism. I just mean it's socialistic. In the sense, if you do well, the school system is designed to beat you down. Because the school system does not want to have envy or jealousy or some kids that are better than others. Even though that's how fucking life works. Some kids work harder and they're better. But think about how terrible the school system is in the sense that the kid that is creative The kid that is taking chances, is trying. The school system wants to push him down. The peers want to push him down. Because too many people are afraid to say, congratulations, that was awesome. You're great. You did a great job. I'm envious of you, not because of who you are and what you did. I'm envious of you because I want to work as hard as you do. That's the good kind of envy. The kind of envy that's really inspiration. I'm envious of the hard worker. Not because of something negative. I'm envious because they inspire me. This is the human condition. The human condition is about pushing. It's about effort. And if you're going to be this creative person in your life, you are going to have haters. They're just going to hate you because they hate themselves. They hate you because they hate themselves. That's unfortunately life. Now, the tricky part about where I'm going today is criticism. Because, yeah, You're going to have some people that are inspired, some that are jealous, some that are envious. But in this day and age where we are all connected, criticism, that's the one that's really difficult to deal with. Because there's some really sick motherfuckers out there that enjoy being professional trolls. And they might professionally troll me And they might professionally troll the 13-year-old innocent kid. I mean, let's face it, I'm pretty innocent too. Yeah, who writes my uh, talking points for me? I don't know how I'm innocent. I'm innocent, kind of, basically a little. Back to my point about criticism. I want to read a quote from H.L. Mencken. A great perspective about criticism. Quote, As practiced by all such learned and diligent, but essentially ignorant and unimaginative men, 
Criticism is a little more than a branch of homiletics. They judge a work of art not by its clarity and sincerity, not by the force and charm of its ideas, not by the technical virtuosity of the artist, not by his originality and artistic courage, but simply and solely by his orthodoxy. If he is what is called a right thinker, if he devotes himself to advocating the transient platitudes in a sonorous manner, then he is worthy of respect. But if he lets fall the slightest hint that he is in doubt about any of them, or worse still, that he is indifferent, then he is a scoundrel and hence, by their theory, a bad artist, end quote. I live to be a bad artist because if I have to kiss the ass of some Weasley, weird, stuck-in-his-mom's-basement individual to try and get my art received. No, thank you. No, thank you. That's not what I want. Now, you might say to yourself, well, Michael, what the hell is the point? I'm going to create my art and have no audience? No, that's not my point. The big picture here is to let go of all of it. The opinions, the feedback, etc. You will know when your art is good. The market will tell you that your art is good. That's the judge. When the market tells you that your art is good, the market will compensate you. When the market compensates you, you've now got a nice circle. Yeah, no one wants to be a starving artist. And when you hear the term starving artist, what the hell? I'm an artist. I'm not starving. Starving artist is an excuse. So promise me this. Stay fixated on creativity. If you're too old and you've already given up, tell your kids. Don't go down the slave line of school. Be something more. Leave the legacy. And when the critics come, And they will come, walk past them, kick them in the balls, do whatever you have to do, but protect your art at all costs. And you know what? If you do this, if you go down this path, it's about the best damn path that we as humans have figured out yet. It's the place where there is the one thing that we all want. And that's freedom. That's the number one goal. We want freedom. That doesn't mean we want to be some jerk on an island all by ourselves. No. It doesn't mean we don't want to share with others. No. But we want freedom to be a unique person. We need liberty. Creation. Creation is the foundation of liberty. I see a time when those awake will understand how to make money in up, down, and surprise markets. Whether new trader or experienced, college student or financial advisor, protecting against a crash or just trying to make a lot of money, Trend Following offers everyone an answer in uncertain times. To get started immediately, send me an email, michael at covell.com. I will send you the right trend following steps to take along with my free video. But if you want to buy and hold, trust the government and trust Wall Street. This is absolutely not for you. 